Hello, second graders. Are you ready for chapter four of Mr. Peabody and Sherman? Here we go. Seconds later, Mr. Peabody parked the way back in the hot desert of ancient Egypt. We walked toward a royal palace in the distance. No telling what kind of perilous position we we'll find Penny in, Mr. Peabody said. I gulped. I hope Penny was okay. It would be my fault if she wasn't. Inside the palace, we saw Penny sitting on a fancy chair. She wore a fancy dress. Egyptian servants fed her grapes. To think I had been worried about her. Hi, Penny, I said. What are you doing here? She asked. Mr. Peabody cleared his throat sternly. We are here to take you home. I'm not Penny anymore, Penny replied, walking with her nose in the air. I'm Princess Had she put precious flower of the Nile. Mr. Peabody clutched her arm. If you think we are going to leave you, unhand her, a voice called. A boy dressed in fancy robes and jewels entered the room. Who's that? I whispered. That is King Tut, said Mr. Peabody. He's my boyfriend, Penny said proudly. Boyfriend? I could feel my eyes bulging out of my head. I size up that king skirt and makeup. Time travel has clearly messed with Penny's brain. Just then, the royal astronomer, I, stepped forward. The wedding must take place tomorrow, he declared. Wedding? Were they for real? Thankfully, Mr. Peabody stepped in. Penny, he began, the king dies young. Are you sure you thought this through? Penny crossed her arms. Ah, Peabody continued still looking at Penny. Would you tell the princess what it means to marry King Tut? I nodded. It means that she will be bound to him eternally through mummification. Hold up, Penny said confused. Can someone walk me through that? King Tut explained. It means that when I die, they'll kill you too. Penny's face turned white. Let the wedding preparations begin. King Tut announced. The royal servants picked up Penny and carried her away. Mr. Peabody Sherman, she cried helplessly. Mr. Peabody Sherman, she cried helplessly. Don't worry, Penny. We'll save you, I said. It seemed like the right thing, right, it seemed like the right thing to say, but that was before Penny's royal servants locked Mr. Peabody and me in a cold, dark pyramid. You can't just leave us here, I shouted. Mr. Peabody, can I hold your hand? I found my dad's hand and gripped it tight. Sherman, that's not my hand, Mr. Peabody replied. I looked down and I saw I was holding the hand of a mummy. <gasps> I shrieked. This place gave me the creeps. Now to find a way out of here, Mr. Peabody said. Even in the dark, I noticed stone coffins all around us. Look, Mr. Peabody said, these tombs are lined with hieroglyphics. Maybe they will help us. I squinted at the squiggly writings and symbols carved into the walls. They looked like a bunch of nonsense to me. Mr. Peabody studied the hieroglyphics. Hmm, he muttered. This one shows us the god Anubis sailing the boats to Ra and un to the underworld. It appears that the boats of Ra are the key to our escape then we must find Penny in time to stop the wedding. If you ask me, we should let her marry that guy. They deserve each other, I mumbled. Sherman, I'd say you are jealous, Peabody said, casting a sideways, sideways glance at me. You think I like Penny? Give me a break, I cried. Mr. Peabody felt his way along the wall. Ah, he cried, putting a hidden, pulling a hidden lever. A secret passageway opened before us. Careful, Mr. Peabody warned. One step in the wrong direction and we're done for. I looked down at a pathway of rocks that zigzagged across the room. Each rock had secret, had a secret code carved into it. Mr. Peabody carefully moved from one rock to the next. He decoded each message as he went. The boat of Ra sailed straight today. Take the wrong boat, man will pay. He reached the other side of the room safely. 
who raised him. All right, Sherman, your turn. Do the puzzle exactly as I did. I gulped. These types of puzzles were easy for Mr. Peabody, but not for me. I took a deep breath and launched myself forward. The boat of Ra sails straight today. I paused. Take the wrong boat, man will play? Mr. Peabody winced. I mean, pay, I shouted, realizing my mistake. But it was too late. The tiles beneath me crumbled. Run, Mr. Peabody commanded. We burst through the doorway just as the floor gave way beneath us. The next thing I knew, we entered a huge cave. Two golden battleships floated before us. The boats of Ra, Mr. Peabody exclaimed. One boat is the way out. The other will send us plunging to certain death. Which boat is not the certain boat, certain death boat, I asked. That one, he shouted, pointing. They looked the same to me. I hopped to the closest one. I watched Mr. Peabody pull a lever on the wall and dive into one of the boats. There was only one problem. We didn't choose the same boat. If Mr. Peabody was on the right boat, then mine meant certain death. What should I do, I yelled. Rocks fell from the ceiling. My boat picked up speed. It headed towards a huge waterfall. I was going to die. Quickly, Mr. Peabody tied a rope around his waist. He leapt onto my boat and grabbed me. We swung back to safety just as my boat tipped over the waterfall. Mm. What do you think is going to happen next? You'll have to wait for chapter five.